Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. It's Wednesday, November 23rd. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. The flu and other respiratory illnesses have swamped hospitals in the St. Louis region, while health systems are already adjusting to pandemic-related worker shortages. We're absolutely crushed. Um, You know, the general consensus is that this is three years all brought into one. In just a few minutes, we'll hear from St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton on how hospitals are dealing with packed emergency rooms. St. Louis, St. Louis County, and the board that oversees the Dome at America's Center have agreed on how to divide more than $500 million from the Rams' departure settlement. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports. Under the agreement, St. Louis would get $280 million, with $30 million dedicated to the downtown convention center. St. Louis County would get $169 million, while a board known as the RSA that oversees the Dome at America's Center would get $70 million. Some St. Louis officials wanted most of the Rams' settlement, especially since the team played in the city and because the county refused to participate financially in a 2015 stadium proposal aimed at keeping the team. The RSA needs to approve the agreement for it to go into effect, and some of its members have been warm to a plan to invest the funds and potentially use the interest for regional projects. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. St. Louis will hold a town hall with the three finalists for police chief. The December 6th session will take place at Bashan High School. St. Louis officials are calling on residents to go to the city's website to choose the topics they want the candidates to address. A decision on the successful candidate is expected by the end of the year. The city has not publicly named the three finalists. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Sack has been the interim chief since the retirement of John Hayden in June. A Missouri House Democrat believes the party's gain of three seats in this year's election will make an impact in the upcoming legislative session. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Kellogg reports. Missouri House Democrats will begin the 2023 legislative session with their highest number of members in years. Despite the gains, the party is still in the super minority and cooperation with Republicans will be necessary to pass Democrat-sponsored legislation. Emily Weber, a Democrat from Kansas City, says they are already working across the aisle. But one area where she hopes to see cooperation but isn't sure it will occur is the possible passage of a red flag law. The other side, they do not want to have those conversations. They want to have the conversation of opening gun gun laws for everybody. And it's not working. Weber says another topic that Democrats hope to address this session is abortion rights. Missouri was the first state to enact its abortion ban after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade in the spring. In Jefferson City, I'm Sarah Kellogg, St. Louis Public Radio. Thousands of people in the St. Louis region are having trouble buying Thanksgiving meals because of rising food prices. The St. Louis Area Food Bank expects to feed 4,000 families over the holiday. That's eight times the number of families it fed just four years ago. Food Bank President and CEO Meredith Knopp. Many, many of the people who are coming to see us, they're working. And they're saying, you know, my budget worked until the prices of everything went up. And now it just doesn't. The food bank needs about $3 million to feed families through the end of the year. A researcher at Missouri University of Science and Technology is working to try to find ways to make robots more human. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports. Professor Yoon Sung Song and his team created a robot that would help direct a person on a short walk, all while measuring when the human would stiffen or relax their arm. The goal is to have data that shows what kind of robotic movements feel more comforting to people. Song says they are learning robots designed to help humans need to be much different. You don't necessarily want the robot to be precise. You want rather the robot to feel like humans in a way where it better be more gentle, it better be more understanding, it better be more accepting. Song hopes the research will help accelerate the design of robots that can assist people in medical and caretaking roles. In Rala, I'm Jonathan All, St. Louis Public Radio. Hospital workers in St. Louis are on high alert as people gather for Thanksgiving. Emergency rooms 
are already crowded with people suffering from respiratory illnesses. I asked St. Louis Public Radio's health reporter, Sarah Phantom, if the region is experiencing another increase in coronavirus cases. The federal government and local and state health departments don't report as granular data as we used to see during the height of the pandemic. Instead, you've probably heard of what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention calls COVID community levels. There are two measurements. The first measures the amount of coronavirus cases in a given place and combines that with hospital capacity and admissions. In St. Louis and St. Louis County, that level is at a medium risk. But when you look at the second measurement, community transmission, we are in the red high level. So what that means in plain English is even if people aren't going to the hospital, there's still a lot of coronavirus being passed around. And that's something to take into consideration before, for example, visiting elderly relatives for the holidays. Is that a good thing? It's great we're not seeing as many coronavirus hospitalizations compared with earlier in the pandemic. I don't think anyone would argue It means immune systems have gotten stronger through vaccinations and just being exposed to the virus. But we sometimes forget about other illnesses like the childhood virus RSV, the flu, and just a plate old cold. These usually follow a set yearly pattern. They start around Halloween and then peak around the Super Bowl. But Dr. Saba Bajwa, a pediatrician at HSHS Medical Group Pediatrics in O'Fallon, says this year is really intense really early on. This round of flu was a little bit sooner than expected. And then on top of that, there's a strain of RSV going around that's causing more severe symptoms than we've seen previously, but we just haven't seen it flooding hospitals this much since before the pandemic. So why is it so bad this year? Doctors think that during the pandemic, we lost a certain amount of immunity for those viruses. People weren't going into work as much and their kids weren't in school. For example, most kids get RSV. It's a really common virus. But now you're seeing many young kids get it at the same time since for the last few years, the risk just hasn't been as high. Here's Dr. Howie Mel, who also works at HSHS in the St. Elizabeth's emergency room. We're absolutely crushed. Um, You know, the general consensus is that this is three years all brought into one, right? Because for so long, we had social distancing, we had masking, we had all of these things which protect kids from being affected, um, and we kind of let them all loose at once. And this swell is coming right as hospitals are dealing with a lot of health workers leaving the profession. So how are hospitals handling it? What I hear from a lot of people is they're dealing now, but they're worried about what the next months could bring. A lot of health workers have dealt with an increased workload since the pandemic started. And nurse Sarah DeWilde, who's a steward for the SLU Hospital Nurses Union, says a lot of workers felt like they weren't getting paid enough to keep them at such a demanding job. Nurses have finally given their notice. They're like, hey, like, look, we're not willing to put up with this. We deserve to make more money for what we're doing because in every job, if you were to take on more responsibilities, you would take on more money, right? So the staff that's left has to absorb this big increase in patients with respiratory illnesses. That's why they hope this current spike in illnesses isn't going to get worse. But as we've seen in the past, when people get together for the holidays, that's when we see a lot of spread. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton with an update on how hospitals are coping with a rise in sick patients at this time of the year. Thanks, sir. And thanks to our David Casares for his help in putting together all that information. Before wrapping up, St. Louisans are rooting for two members of the United States men's national team with local ties during the 2022 World Cup, which is underway in the Middle East. St. Louis Public Radio's Brian Munoz reports. This was the scene at Amsterdam Tavern in South St. Louis when the United States men's national team scored its first goal against Wales earlier this week. Two St. Louis natives are playing on the U.S. team, forward Josh Sargent and center back Tim Ream. The O'Fallon, Missouri-based St. Dominic High School alumni both later on went to play professionally in England. Ream most recently with Fulham FC of the Premier League and Sargent with Norwich City of the Championship League. Billy Holly is a general manager at Amsterdam Tavern. He says having local representation in the World Cup fuels soccer fans in St. Louis. We are a soccer capital for a reason. But people just turn out, and even more so, you have two local players, so people are more vested. 
The United States will continue group play on Friday as they take on England at 1 p.m. I'm Brian Munoz, St. Louis Public Radio. And I'll point out that Canada plays its first World Cup game since 1986, today against Belgium. If I did not mention that, my high school friends would likely cut all ties with me. No podcast for the rest of the week as we take a break for Thanksgiving. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.